Immediately you're told that you're pregnant. I don't know how it is with other women. But for me, immediately I'm told that I'm pregnant. There is a joy and a bond that I develop with my child. And I'm looking forward to how the child is going to look like. I'm looking forward to what the child is going to be. You develop this bond and once you're told that, oh, the child is no longer there. It's no longer existing. It's, it is devastating. Hey everybody, what's up super people? It's your girl Auntie Z here. To all the old subscribers, I'm so glad that you're tuning in once again again to this episode of um, my delicious life like I like to call it because it's all about me um, sharing and bearing my heart with you guys and to you guys who are new you're so welcome thank you so much for choosing to watch me today make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified every time I post a video so last week guys I started this series about my journey to weight loss and health and I talked about my truths you know I bore my heart with you guys um, explaining to you how I left from 65 kilos to almost double my weight at this moment if you have not watched that video yet I highly recommend you click this link right over here <laughs> and watch the video so that you have an introduction and overview of um, things that I spoke about and then you can follow this video as well in today's video guys I want to talk to you about how miscarriages the numerous miscarriages that I had led to depression and how depression affected my health mentally physically emotionally and psychologically so if you may grab yourself a cup of Zobo or Folere drink or a hot cup of cocoa if you're in a cold place smuggle up in a blanket and let's get right into it some of you know what a miscarriage is for those of you who do not know what a miscarriage is is when you lose your baby before it is born for one reason or the other and this usually happens um, within the first three months of pregnancy it is actually more frequent within the first three months of pregnancy science has given quite a number of reasons why this happens sometimes they say there's a genetic defect or something like that you know I don't even want to get into the science of it all but um, bottom line is you lose your baby before that baby is born some people lose the baby earlier on in the pregnancy like uh, five six seven weeks nine weeks twelve weeks other people lose the baby a little bit further on in the pregnancy after three months some people even lose the baby at five months and uh, yeah it's all about losing the baby before that baby is born so um, okay in my case I had three miscarriages and um, I wanted to have children I love children from childhood <laughs> I can remember one lady who was renting our house back in the day she was pregnant my mom used to tell me that I'll actually steal food like fried chicken and um, hide and go and give it to this lady who was pregnant so that when she gave birth to the child I think I was so young I was very young at the time maybe six years old or so so when this lady gave birth to the child um, the lady named the child Zita so that's how much I love children and growing up you guys know um, that I was a nanny in Germany I came to Germany as a nanny so I've always really really loved children and I used to tell myself that oh if I get married one day I, I love to have like four children so before we got married this is a topic that I discussed with my then fiance now husband um, we really wanted to have children so much so that um, we chose the date of our wedding to coincide with my ovulation period so it is something that was really really deliberate so <laughs> we were getting married on the 24th of April that was 2010 and we chose that particular date because it fell um, on the time of my ovulation and because we really wanted to have our kids really fast get done with that and then proceed to do other things like um, answer to ministry and stuff like that uh, that was our wish <laughs> and you know many times you make wishes you have desires but um, what God permits that's what's going to happen I personally had three miscarriages the first one I had just after we got married so actually the plan of the ovulation period and the marriage worked <laughs> it worked so I got pregnant uh, I found out I was pregnant in May. I got married in April and at the end of May, I found out I was pregnant. I was like, oh my goodness, this is something, you know. Uh, so uh, what happened with, was that I think after six weeks when the pregnancy was confirmed because I saw my, my gynecologist, pregnancy confirmed, tests were made, the pregnancy was confirmed. And so at about six or seven weeks pregnant, one day I think I had to go to work, something like that. And my husband was accompanying me to go and help me do that job because we had just found out that I was pregnant. So he didn't want me, you know how men are. 
but especially during the first pregnancy you don't even know what's happening so you're really pretty careful and so he said no he's going to accompany me to do that job i was a student i had to go and clean somebody's house one lady's house that i had been working for a very long time and so he accompanied me to do that job we did the job and when we came back that night and we, we slept i just felt you know like there was something you know when you have your period you feel it as it's coming out so i felt it and this time it was really quite weird because i don't have a heavy period so but this time i felt, felt that this kind of period is really heavy and why should i have my period when i just found out that i am pregnant so went to the bathroom to look and i discovered some clots of blood and stuff like that I told my husband it was in the middle of the night so we waited for the morning went to the to the gynecologist they checked 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 they couldn't see the a, a, a heartbeat of a child anymore couldn't see the small embryo that was there before and um let me tell you it was it was a devastating moment for us very very devastating um the second time i had a miscarriage was after i gave birth to my first child after i gave birth to jemima um, some time after that i think when was it even a couple of months, I should think. A couple of months, I think, after that, I was pregnant. Maybe a year or something. Because actually, they gave me one year after I gave birth to Jemima. The doctors gave me one year to really let my body rest. Because like I mentioned to you guys, my um, cesarean section was really rough. It was rough on me. It wasn't healing. And so they gave me one year to rest my body and not to get pregnant. So I think we respected that by the way because we were not even having any sexual relationship because my wounds were really terrible it was a, a nightmare you couldn't indulge in in, in 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 sex with your husband because your your body your 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 the below your, your tummy is really painful you know so that's how we also <laughs> the pains forced us to respect that and so i think i got pregnant again after one year after one year jemima was already about one year i should think and i also lost that pregnancy and this time i lost that pregnancy at around 10 or 11 weeks i can't even begin to explain to you how i felt you know i can't begin to explain to you how devastating that was you know you begin to ask yourself questions why is this happening to you why did the baby not leave you know you have no questions you have questions but you can't get appropriate answers that um can console you it is devastating like that and just before I, i'm going to come back to this uh, feelings but I, I had the third miscarriage after i gave birth to my son emmanuel so i gave birth to emmanuel and then I had, I was pregnant again, and then I had a miscarriage as well. And this time, the, pregnant, the, the miscarriage was at 12 weeks. So you can imagine the baby, you can practically see the baby. The arms are formed, the legs are formed, everything. You go for your checkup, you see the heart, everything. You, you go and come, go and come, you see that now one day you go and the heart is not beating anymore. During the last miscarriage, I was actually rushed to the hospital by an ambulance because the bleeding was so heavy the pain was so excruciating that i had to be rushed to the hospital with an ambulance they checked check check um they weren't seeing the baby clearly anymore they didn't have the heartbeat but what was happening was that they were not even seeing the baby clearly anymore something that we had on 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 this their pictures you know when you go to for checkup they usually have these pictures that they snap of the baby and show you so it was like there was a fluid all over the place just covering the baby you could not really see the baby's features well and at that moment i'm telling you that it just break my my world just shattered completely because at the end of the day you cannot understand why things like this is happening you know and of course um many people might think that oh no you already have two children and eventually people some of my friends even and also some christians they will say oh you already have a child like for example when the the first the, the second one happened i already had jemima and in the church they will say oh you have to count your blessings some other person said oh you already have a child what about the people who don't have children you know those words that are thrown out at you as if that is going to cancel the fact that you have lost a baby and i keep saying that if you haven't gone through these emotions you would never it is so difficult to understand why a lady or it was so difficult for people even my husband to understand why i had mood swings i was in a state of sometimes in, i was an emotional wreck most of the time i was constantly angry i would just get angry 
for, for no reason, you know, something that I could easily, something that someone would generally think, okay, you know, you're not supposed to be angry about that. Losing a child or losing a pregnancy puts you in a state of sadness, into a depth of sadness and despair and lack of hope and maybe even lack of, of faith and questioning God that words cannot explain. And then you begin to think to yourself, oh, this is unfair. Why would God allow you to carry a baby and then uh, lose the baby just a couple of weeks after? If the baby wasn't supposed to be there, then why should you even get pregnant in the first place, you know? So those are the kind of things that went through my mind that put me in all kinds of moods. I would be crying. My husband would ask me, well, why are you crying? Oh, you are healthy. At least you are healthy. There's nothing wrong with you. You still have other children. Other people, other my friends, some of my friends say, oh, you still have other children. But that did not cancel the fact that I have lost my children. It didn't, cancel, it didn't cancel the fact that I've lost my baby, you know? You have an, a void, and when you get pregnant, you develop a kind of bond immediately. Immediately, you're told that you're pregnant. I don't know how it is with other women. But for me, immediately I'm told that I'm pregnant, there is a joy and a bond that I develop with my child, and I'm looking forward to how the child is going to look like. I'm looking forward to what the child is going to be. You develop this bond, and once you're told that, oh, the child is no longer there, it's no longer existing, it's, it is devastating. It is it is, it is so difficult to, to go through that. So um, even though statistics has it that 15 to 20% of confirmed pregnancies end up as a miscarriage, it still doesn't take away that pain, that emptiness, that longing to have and hold your child. It still doesn't take that away. And um, for some people, it leads to more serious things. Thank goodness, of course, I think I went through a phase of depression myself where I found myself in this dark place where I didn't want to speak to anyone. I didn't want to do anything. I just wanted to lay in my bed and just weep, you know, and just weep. And what really got me most was when people say things like, when you continue crying like that, or you continue behaving like that, it shows that you lack faith. And I'm like, excuse me? Have you ever lost a pregnancy? Have you ever lost two pregnancies? Have you ever lost three? Do you know what it means to go through all of that? And this thing, and I just want to say something here that um, I have learned that a loss is a loss. Many times in our society, what I've realized is that our society tries to stop people from showing their, their pain or for, for crying and stuff like that. There's a kind of stigma that is attached to people who weep and who show emotion, who show weaknesses because of the pain of loss. And that is something that really we need to stop this because um, it has created a kind of stigma and a kind of silence over these matters. That is why you are going to see that so many African women, even in Cameroon, they have miscarriages, but they don't even talk about it. They don't tell their, their, their loved ones about it. They, don't, they bear all of that pain and the sorrow in them, and which eats into their minds and into their hearts and causes even more serious problems. So um, I've learned from the Bible that sometimes it's good to listen more and just let someone cry their pain away. You know, there should be a time of mourning. A time of mourning loss, whatever loss it is, whether it's a baby, whether it's an, uh, an adult, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a parent, they should people should be given the chance to mourn their loss, and that is the problem, especially especially also in the Christian environment. You're not it's as if you're not allowed to, to, to mourn. If you mourn the loss of a child, it's like you're saying, Oh, God is not good enough for giving you other children or for blessing you with other things or you are not acknowledging the goodness of God in other areas of your life which is so unfair to the person that is going through a very difficult situation maybe of loss or something just to share with you some of the things that I went through during these periods of miscarriages um, I, the first one was really really good I, the feeling of loss I mean loss and emptiness was so hard so difficult that I started feeling that void with the only thing that I knew that couldn't disappoint me, food, you know. So 
um, I would eat, I would forget about all of the, all of the nutritional advice that I even gave to people, you know, because at the moment I was, I was suffering, you know, I needed something to fill my void. And of course, food was not the solution. I felt at that time that every time I had my share of my chocolate or maybe my fried rice, I felt a little bit better. And of course, you feel better for just that period. And after that period, the whole drama starts again. And in my case, I didn't only lose a child once, I lost the child the next time and I lost the child again. So three times. In between the miscarriages, there were also the cesarean sections that were terrible on me. I really weighed down on me physically. So it was really, really, really a painful um, experience for me, if I say so. And of course, many people wouldn't see that on my face because most of the time I'm smiling, I'm jumping uh, online, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But to be quite honest, it wasn't an easy thing for me. And of course, there are some people that manage these emotions differently. Some people go through um, miscarriages differently. Some people don't have the same symptoms, maybe like myself. So um, it doesn't mean that if I went through that, some other person must go through that as well. Some people handle it better. Some people don't. You know, in my case, maybe um, I was a little bit more uh, touched by the fact that it happened even frequently. You see, I also went through mood shifts, you know, mood swings. One minute I'm annoyed, I'm in a state of despair. One minute, in fact, it was just this up and down, up and down, up and down. You just feel that, what the heck is going on? You know, and you want to come out of there, but it seems so difficult, you know. And then the people that surround you are not helping. Of course, I didn't go to my family close, close, I need to say all of this, but um, like uh, 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 the, the, the Christian community, my husband was there, you know, he would try to encourage me in his own way, saying that, oh, don't worry, God is going to do it for you, and so on and so forth. He would pray with me and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I still felt had those emotions. So I was angry, I was vulnerable. The least situation could just cause a total catastrophe. The way I would react to it, it could just be really terrible. And of course, all of the mood swings, um, also affected my relationship with my spouse, you know, because there were times I just wanted to isolate myself, just wanted to be alone. I didn't want to hear anything. I didn't want even somebody to even pray for me. I didn't want it. I didn't want any of that. I just wanted to be alone, you know, um, trying to suit my own emotions by myself. And I thank God that I had one thing, the word of God, which um, always comes in handy um, at the very, very difficult times. And it's the word of God that really helped me to come out from that place. Because at the end of the day, when you get to, into a place where you feel like you can't come out, I did not have any suicidal thoughts, actually. I didn't have any of that. So that's how it went down. It wasn't an easy thing. And today, um, I really, really understand women who have gone through miscarriages. And I just want to say and encourage you, if you have had a miscarriage or you're going through a miscarriage at this moment, I want you to know that it's okay to cry yourself to sleep. It's okay to feel hurt. It's okay to feel angry. It's okay to even question some things because it's part of the process. It's part of the healing process. If you are not allowed to question, to be angry, to, to, to show to bring out those emotions from within, then it's going to eat you up in the, on the inside and you're going to stay in that dark place for even much longer. Know that you're not alone. So many other ladies have gone through the same thing. Many people don't speak about it, it's true, but know that you are not alone and this is a phase is going to pass, okay? I just want to encourage you out there and for those of you who has someone or who knows someone who is going through a miscarriage or who has just recently gone through a miscarriage i want to really plead with you not to say certain things there are certain things that you don't say to someone who is hurting it it benefits the person more when you listen when you give your shoulder so that that person can cry on it and also other things that you can do you can offer your services, offer to run errands, you know, ask them if they want to eat something particular, ask them if they would like a, a warm bath, you know, or take care of other children or another child who is there or something like that, you know, offer errands, offer your help, offer a listening ear, that's so very important. A listening ear instead of saying things like a child of God cannot be in despair or a child of God cannot be depressed. It is not godly to be depressed and so on and so forth. Listen, listen, until you have gone through that 
phase until you have gone through a, a miscarriage. You wouldn't know how it feels. You wouldn't know how it feels. So, uh, if, the, if 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 at all, if at all, you want to do something, then listen more. Listen more. Talk less. Offer your arms. Offer your shoulder where the person can cry on, and offer your service that the person can can use. Also, if you're going through a miscarriage, seek help. Seek help. If you've just gone through a miscarriage, if you don't have anybody you can talk to, then seek help. Seek professional help. There are um, psychologists out there who can help you. Can hold your hand and, 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 and help you through this phase okay know that you're not alone you are going to get through this you're going to certainly get through this I like to always say I have six children three are alive and three are in heaven you know <laughs> so at the end of the day um, know that all things work for good for those who love God and who are called to his purpose so that's just what um, kept me going the word of God there were many times I just went to God in just in tears, just crying, I had nothing to say, I'll just be crying in the presence of God. And I felt that comfort, you know, of the presence of God. Seek the presence of God in this period if you are going through it. Seek God's presence and allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you because He's the comforter. And at the end of the day, you're going to see that it may take some days or some weeks, it may even take some months, but you're definitely going to go get out of it and also know that food is not the solution it's just a temporary comfort and it's, sometimes food may do more harm than good like in my case i hope that this video has been of value to you if you know someone who has gone through a miscarriage or who is currently going through a miscarriage and you have some tips that you want to share please comment in the comment area below so that other people can benefit from this. Make sure that you share this video. Give me two thumbs up and I'm going to see you in my next video.